Diana just did something very inspirational here. Look at this, look at this pathetic girl. Just being pathetic right now, which is cool. Everyone's pathetic in their own ways at sometimes. But she just sits here and she's like, I'm feeling depressed. And I, I was, am. Yeah, that's great. And that's what I'm saying. That's, I'm happy to be in a relationship with such a beautiful woman that can admit that when it's happening. The first, what did, we, what did Brandon say that we say that he probably said from someone else? Acknowledge. Acknowledge, accept, an action. Mm -hmm. So she acknowledges that she's feeling a little depressed. That doesn't mean she is depressed, does no, it? But does that mean you're a depressed person? No, it means I, you're experiencing days, depression. We all wake up some days and just, um, you know, we don't feel as good as other days. And we just have to accept that some days are just more depressing for some reason than other days and it's good. Exactly. It makes you appreciate the other days more, but... So she acknowledged it and she accepted it and now we might take some action on it, but I do want to ask you mm -hmm. if you believe that depression is emotions turned inward mm -hmm. because that's what basically, when you think of depression, if you think of actual words, emotion is energy in motion, depression, your energy is no longer in motion, right? Mm -hmm. You're no longer having your emotions. So what emotion are you turning inward, baby? Tell us all. I bet uh, I bet your audience will like it. Maybe some anger and some sadness. Anger and sadness and if we're going to be really wise, mm -hmm. the anger and sadness it's like is a therapy session. I know. This anger and sadness is um basically you have it. It's yours. Mm -hmm. You create it. Mm -hmm. What are you projecting it on? What are you projecting this anger and sadness on? And that delusional mind of yours? What do you mean? Like, what are you pretending to project the anger and sadness on? Or are you just saying that, are you just admitting that you're angry and sad at yourself? It's a, yeah, I think. Oh, but so so what's the reason do you think you're, I what's your know. rationalization that why you're being angry and sad at yourself? I don't have a rationalization. Mm. Today is just the last happy day. Advanced. Maybe that my phone is dying. 4% better or less. Mm, that's a story. We know that's not the truth. <laughs> we know that's a distraction from the truth. You look pretty. I don't like you having that camera all the way up my face. Oh, why? I don't know. You just have a tendency to stick it like very, very close up my face. It looks good. I think you look good. Okay. I think well, this, is, this could be a powerful video for the Do It With Dianers, really. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I don't... I mean, maybe, maybe it will. I'm, I mean, I'm just like everyone else. I have less happy days just like I assume or imagine that you do. Yeah, I do. And exactly, sometimes people um, tend to, especially when you're filming, you, t you probably tend to film the happier times. So there could be an image that's being a little miscon mistaken by some people. Well, some people might think that's just the reality of like every minute. I was sad about my skin, but it got better. So now I'm happy about that. Well, maybe it's because you allowed the sadness to take, cur take place. Yeah, I don't think so. Maybe the same walls. I think I'm, I'm frustrated that I don't have a computer and I have to fight with you over using that one. Okay, there we go. I think that's more true than the time, the phone dying. The what? The phone dying. No, that's because I have to like, use my phone, so it's dying all the time. Quality problems to have. Quality, but I do, I do want to say... You can't do everything from your phone. There's only so much. You can't edit a video from your phone. I do want to say, though, that this is, that's a quality problem to have. Yeah. We're fortunate enough to have that issue. Mm -hmm. It's a challenge. We'll call it a challenge instead of a problem. Apparently the, and it's uh, cloudy today. Apparently the ego likes to call things problems or weaknesses, when in reality, if you call them challenges, then they can become your strengths. Um, but I was going to say that the same D Diana allowing sadness and anger into her, or allowing her to experience sadness and anger, putting those walls down, that she allows that to take place, might be the same That's walls, right. maybe the same walls that she puts down that allow happiness and joy to take place. Mm -hmm. And maybe I you should turn the camera out when you're talking. Oh yeah, I was just thinking. I mean, it's something we've considered recently. To the same degree, she looked at her distracting herself. Come on, just stop texting for a second. I'm just. Let's stay present for one moment while we're on the camera. <laughs> the, the, to the same degree that you allow sadness or madness or anger or any emotion is to the same degree that you'll allow other emotions. Happiness, joy, bliss, feeling good. And that doesn't mean that you have to be equally as angry as you have to be happy, but maybe to the same degree when you do feel angry that you allow your anger to take place, is to the same degree when you're happy you'll allow happiness to take place. So I just wanted to give Dinah some props even though she's... No, I'm well, hearing you. Where she's going through some things, she's distracting herself with her cell phone. Anyways, that was a nice five-minute therapy session for everyone that no, got to watch. I, I agree.
agree. I think it's just important that we um, acknowledge the fact that it just it happens and it's okay because it, it's not no emotion is gonna last forever. So whether you're happy or sad, it's just it's temporary, and it makes you appreciate the good days that much more. And you now we all have whatever struggles it is. I think it's just important not to. Um, what's that word? When you like put your anger towards something that it's not like. Oh, deflect. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And sometimes anger is a deflection for actually feeling sadness. So maybe Diana just we needs often to. deal with some uh, misdirected anger. Or people in general tend to do that. So I think it's just important to try and figure out what it is and just focus on the real issue. That's a great, another great level though, the idea that anger could be deflecting from something deeper like sadness. Mm -hmm. That's a great awareness, acknowledgement, and acceptance. Diana's advanced people listen to her. <laughs> She's a great teacher here. She is. So I have something smart to say when I feel depressed, huh? Uh, you have something smart to say all the time. But this is just different. This is more of a taboo topic many people don't talk about. I think I it could be really helpful for you to talk about to other people. Yeah. And for others that listen to it with an open heart. But that's where I think I, I mean, I've been in a black hole of depression before. I know what like it means to just be stuck in it. But I don't, do you even think it's possible to be like depressed long term? Me? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. If someone just keeps blocking their emotions, then uh, they'll probably keep getting. I it. thought it's... you had like some weird comment about it in the past. Oh uh, no! Well, no, I think I think what it is is that depression is definitely a, an experience of blocked emotions that you can change, that people can change, and sometimes people are I think are definitely more genetically or environmentally predisposed based on their what they're consuming or based on their environment or based on their drugs they're taking. You know, mm -hmm. you can definitely create an environment where depression has a much easier place to latch onto. Um, Just don't get stuck there. <laughs> yeah, there was something I was going to say about all this. That the question is, whose blog will this go on now? Huh? The question is, who blog? Whose blog will this go on now? <laughs> Let's go eat some pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I love it. I, I remember that you were saying it's important just to feel those emotions, mm -hmm. and I totally agree with you. And you're like, it's well, you know what's not important all the time is to. Uh, try to figure them out. We're, people think, sometimes we think, I think, and probably others do, if I'm a reflection of others and if I can project on you for a second, that I think that I can make a sense of everything. But our emotions are not necessarily logical. That we are, not only are we logical beings, but we're also emotional beings. And emotions don't have to make sense. I made a status on this earlier that life and especially emotions you don't have to make sense of that sometimes the mystery is the prize and you can embrace the wisdom of insecurity and basically love to learn and learn to love. Hopefully that was helpful to someone. If that was helpful to you, comment below with the word congrats. <laughs> Cause that's... So other people are not making you depressed, you're making yourself depressed. That might be a tough one for people to swallow, though. Well, uh, yeah, and that is a tough one for a lot of people to swallow, but a great trick that I've talked about in a previous video is just to start practicing, start with the language. Like, instead of saying, you make me angry, or I'm, you make me depressed, say, I make myself angry around you, or I make myself happy around you. Stop giving people responsibility for how you feel. But I think it's because people think that it's wrong to feel that way. So if I'm, oh, if I'm angry, that's... it's like, it's your fault that I'm angry, and that's not cool. But really, you're choosing to be angry, so you're making yourself angry, but it's okay to be angry. What a wind! What, I mean, yeah, that's that, that, I mean, it, you're right. We might take a step back. That anger and fighting are very important, as long as done in a healthy way. Those are windows to a more of your, I think, a clearer picture of the divine self that you are. That this bag of bones and flesh is holding. It's very important to feel anger and sadness and madness and craziness and be emotional. Those are windows to something much bigger than what you do, or what you have, or what you say, or what you believe. Yeah, and often what we believe is not even true. Like, if I think I'm angry because my phone is dying, that's probably not really the issue. Classic why because game. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Something probably happened to you when you were five that triggered it, so you don't really know what it is. There's this awesome story that we tell on our retreats. I'm not sure exactly how it goes, but I'll just make it up a little bit. I'll, I'll put my, 
put up my own spin on it, that Freud hypnotized someone in his class to prove a point. He hypnotized them basically saying when he said a magic word, we'll just say congrats. Um, when he says congrats, the guy's going to go outside, put his umbrella up, and then put the umbrella back in and come back and sit down. Sure enough, he was under hypnosis. Freud said congrats. The guy goes out there, does that. He unhypnotizes them, takes them out of hypnosis, and he asks, why'd you do that? He's like, oh, uh, I was checking the weather to make sure that I could meet up with my friends later just to see, you know, what the weather was going to be like later tonight. He came up with some crazy story that had nothing to do with reality. It was just something he was under hypnosis. So the question of that is, don't always believe your why because games. To focus more on the how. When you're feeling upset or angry or sad, Diana, how are you feeling? How are you feeling on a physical level, on a sensation level? Like I have a rock on my chest and... Um my stomach is kind of tight. And if we were going to get to the real core of this, mm -hmm. we would ask you to see if you can make that increase. Mm -hmm. See if you can see if you can make that rock heavier. And that, what was the other one? Just tight stomach. Yeah, if you can make your stomach tighter. See if you can physically do that. And uh, just to save you a shortcut of a full session here, that what basically happens is when someone's resisting something, it persists, and it becomes almost something they can't handle or they're not in control of. That's what they imagine. And if you can just embrace this feeling of sadness or anger, then the feeling comes and goes. And you get to enjoy the experience rather than resisting it and being denial about it. So yeah, try uh, stop playing why because games. Focus on the how, which brings you to your heart and your senses rather than your mind. The delusional mind is crazy. And uh, also change your language to I make myself feel this way when I'm around you or when I'm here, whatever. Just stay, start taking ownership of your feelings and then watch the shift and transformation that takes place. And then just choose to be happy. I mean, in this case, I'll just choose to be sad and depressed because that's okay. But in some cases, uh, you just... For some, sure it's if okay. If some people tell you something and you don't agree with them and you're making yourself angry, then... I mean, that is where it's a good idea to just practice to say, okay, you don't make sense, but I'm not going to let myself get angry about that. So just be okay with other people not agreeing. Yeah, and this is important stuff, what you're saying. I mean, how boring would life be if we had to make sense of everything? She's Louise. Like I said, the challenge is the solution. The mystery is the prize. The journey is the destination, baby. And... Uh, I love what uh, John told you the other day. You remember John Nolan's his journey of wisdom, his website, and uh, he was we were at one of his yeah, we were at one of the workshops. And he was talking about is there really a difference between laughter and crying? You cry till you laugh, you laugh till you cry. They're both just releasing emotions. Yeah. And some people need to laugh a lot to express their emotions, and some people need to cry a lot. Well, and like... most people need to cry when they do laugh because, based away on our culture, getting upset or crying is very discouraged because. How hard is it to control a rebellious culture? Well, Think about it. Matrixy, matrixy. In kids, I mean, whenever you yell at them, they will start laughing instead of crying, and that's just a deflection. They just release that emotion, and sometimes through it's laughter, because it's yeah. more socially acceptable. Yeah. But this ain't this ain't that culture, Diana. You cry as much as you need. I know. I do that too. <laughs> do you like having a husband that allows you give me credit, make me feel important? <laughs> After all that, I tell you, making me feel important. <laughs> It's very important for us to be, feel important, to make ourselves feel important, to make ourselves have attention. Don't think that you're not needy. I'm very needy. And it's okay to be it. What's not okay is if you don't admit it. Humans yeah. are designed to be needy and just at least try to get our needs fulfilled. These are some big topics. I mean, here, here how, how much are you being used by your ego if you're sitting on the sidelines talking trash and trying to bring people down there, shining their gifts of God. And it reminds me, I, have I talked about this as a little example about the mirror? I was working out in the gym in the mirror and my friend, we were playing this game where we judge each other and talk about what that reflects within each other. And he was judging me for working out in front of the mirror because I'm so vain, like how vain that is. But then he realized what that reflected in him. He is so vain that he was judging me doing something that he wanted to do and he wouldn't do it because he was so vain, he was scared what it looked like to look in the mirror to work out. So he would go home and flex in the mirror in private. <laughs> now that's egotistical. And I was telling someone at the gym, the fan was at the gym the other day working out his shirt off. These are like simple examples, but don't. It's that Marianne Wilmeson quote about we're not afraid, and we're not nearly as afraid of our dark side as we are what we're capable of. That, that whole thing, the ego is addicted, according to that same workshop, and I, it kind of resonates deeply within me, the ego is addicted to fear and shame. 
And there's usually a fear of failure, fear of success, or fear, fear of intimacy. And I, I love it when someone can just be who they are and be proud and show it off. Show off your gifts. That's what we're here for. It's giving glory to our Creator. So we cut it here. If there's yeah, something... I might have to put this on my video. I might just make a, video, a private video about this. Okay. This is big topics. If this, if this resonated deeply with you as it does with us, come on one of our retreats. That's me advertising because I am proud of the process that been has blessed upon us that we've been able to instill in people's lives and the transformation that's taken place with over hundreds of people, whether they're ambassadors, interns, or retreat attendees. We're taking the next level, Virgin Islands, beginning of the next year. We might even have our friend Mackenzie Miller, who has a huge yoga following, be there. So check our website and, keep, and try some of these th things in your life and see what happens. Is that it, Diana? Do you feel a little better? No, no, I just got mad that uh, you're pimping me out on your channel. Oh, I can put it on yours too. <laughs> Look at her. Deflecting, text deflecting. Yep, and it works really deflecting. well. Deflecting. How can we say that? Deflect, text, deflect texting. Deflecting. The texting, the texting. <laughs> on one just, last. Why don't you say yeah. there's one topic that you want to hear more about, then just comment below. And that's a good one. Let's let Diana take over. If there's one topic that you want to hear more about, comment below and tell us what it is. Hey, maybe ask some questions. Maybe we'll start doing some Q&As while we're together uh, between me and her or us and the Rob Ross. And uh, what I wanted to say was, if you ever I wanted to, uh, today, I went to a pharmacy. Whoa, if you want to see The Matrix, it was in their Facebook status I just made. Follow my Facebook if you want to hear some of these things. I'm trying to use it as a way to process my stream of consciousness that seems to be all over the place sometimes. Uh, ADHD, ambitious, defiant, happy animal. Um, oh, here we go. The Matrix. You go into a pharmacy where they apparently, you know, it's for health, like the health business, and go see all the cheap beer, liquor, processed foods, like loaded with like wheat, gluten, tr trans fats or disguise names for trans fats, all these things that are probably some of the demons of our health. Some of them are holding our back from our highest potential. And right next to the drugs that apparently make us better, then you will see the matrix. And if, that isn't be, if that's not clear enough to you, go to a hospital, cafeteria, or just go, into a, go visit a patient that's like locked in a room with a lack of oxygen, sunlight, commu like poor communication, strapped up to some kind of drug making them feel a way they, or masking a way they're actually feeling and have jello and drugs for dinner. Uh, not all, there are some amazing people out there doing amazing things in the health field, but the business, the healthcare business in a lot of ways is pretty sick. I feel like it gets sick just stepping into the hospital. Oh, and I've then said that looking before. looking at the food, I'm like, Oh, I think the best way, if I was really, if my aim, if I was like, hey, I'm going to go get sick, like dying, watch me, I'm going to go get sick, I think the best way I could go sick is to go spend time in the hospital. Yeah, How sick. wacky is that? There needs, and I, I, people are out there making changes, some people that we look up to and we interview, they are transforming the health world, and I, I would uh, encourage you to support that movement, because the healthcare business sometimes is not always has a, it maybe it's its intentions are more about filling its pockets than filling your cup with health. Oh, I think it's worse here than it is in Denmark. Now. Oh no! Yes. The United States hate. Yes. I love you. I love you too. Give me a kiss. Give me a kiss. People like it when we're affectionate. <laughs> this is not an act. This is a real deal.